Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys for another video and a very happy new year to all of you who are entering 2018. Now the transfer window is officially open and obviously once again today we are going to be discussing Liverpool's Felipe Coutinho but not in terms of the transfer rumours. Today we're going to be discussing whether he is going to be worth the absolutely astronomical fee that Liverpool are going to demand that we pay for his services. So what we're going to be doing in this video... I'm going to be looking at the positives and negatives of Coutinho joining Barcelona and I'm going to be doing it slightly differently to how I usually do because usually I would sort of list all the positives and then I would go on to the negatives. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to name one positive and then I'm going to name one negative and we're going to go through the video like that. In all, I have four positives and four negatives, lots of different ways of looking at this Coutinho deal and a lot of good things and some things that we need to consider when we're about to sign Coutinho. So we're going to be going through that in the video and this basically comes after a very reliable journalist, Alfredo Martinez. He came out, he works for Onda Cero in Spain. He came out and said that he has been told by Liverpool the FIFA Coutinho would be 140 million euros plus 40 million euros in variables. That altogether would, of course, be 180 million euros, which would be absolutely colossal. It's been widely reported elsewhere the fee would be around 150 to 160 million euros. So either way, it's going to be a massive, massive deal. And in this video, we're going to find out, is he really worth it? So I'm going to start with a negative, which I have touched on already, and that would be the absolutely colossal fee. It is a very, very expensive deal. It is going to take an awful lot of money to sign Coutinho. 150, 180, whatever it would be, it would probably go through as around the third most expensive transfer of all time, behind Neymar, behind Mbappe when it goes through to PSG. That's going to be around 180 million. So Coutinho is going to be around that sort of mark, and it is a lot and lot of money. What I would say about that also is it's not just about Coutinho, it's about the fact that spending all that money on just one player would then leave us probably unable to strengthen in other positions. We might not be able to go out and signed a really good centre-back to bring in maybe in the summer or even in January and we probably as well wouldn't be able to sign somebody like Arthur in the controlling midfield position. So signing Coutinho as great a player as he is might leave us short in other areas in the long term. However, having said that, and that's the reason why I'm doing the negative then the positive because obviously it is a huge fee, but on the spin side of that, he is for me one of the best creative midfield players or one of the best creative players in general in world football right now. He would probably walk into most teams right throughout the world. He's a phenomenal player. He's brilliant in front of goal, not only in terms of scoring goals, but he can create goals. He's good on the ball. He's got an excellent first touch. He can carry the ball well. That's really important as well. Coming into a Barcelona team, obviously a lot of people are looking to maybe him to replace Iniesta in the future. That would certainly be the aim for him to come into that midfield, to slot into that creative midfield role. Now we need to start thinking about the future. And Coutinho certainly is a wonderful creative player in his time at Liverpool so far. 201 games in all competitions, 54 goals to his name with 46 assists. His record is outstanding, he's a very, very good player in front of goal, and he certainly is one of the best in the world in his position. Negative two, though, would be the fact that obviously he could not play Champions League football this season, and that is certainly a drawback. Obviously, if you're bringing somebody in, especially for that amount of money, you want them to be able to play in the biggest competition, you want to be able to play in the biggest games, and unfortunately, because Coutinho has appeared already in the Champions League, the season with Liverpool, he would not be eligible to play in the Champions League for us this season. Obviously for next season, it'll be absolutely fine but in bringing him in in January, it would simply be only the league and the cup which Coutinho would be able to participate in. In the Spanish papers, they've basically been saying if we sign Coutinho, he will play a lot of the league games with Iniesta being rested for the big Champions League games. But obviously, it is a very big price to pay for maybe somebody who can't yet compete on all fronts. But having said that once again, Positive 2 brings me on to his age, which is currently 25 years old. He doesn't turn 26 until the summer. And it has to be said right now, he's at a very, very good time to join a club like Barcelona. He still has a lot of years left in his career. He still has his peak to come. That's what it's fully believed. And there's also a real belief among people around Coutinho, a lot of people who watch him as well, that around better players, in around Barcelona players, he will become an even better player. Because every time he goes on international duty with Brazil, around the likes of Neymar and players like that, he performs every single time. And it is also believed that La Liga will also probably suit him even more so than the Premier League has. So it's really going to be interesting to see how Coutinho sort of elevates his level once he joins Barcelona, if he does, of course. But if he does, he's still at a good age and he still has a lot of years to come as well, 
where potentially he could pay back that astronomical transfer fee. Negative three would relate to his ideal position, and that is one of the biggest questions for me. With Coutinho coming in, where exactly is he going to play? Where do we want him to play? Obviously, I've just said we want somebody to replace Iniesta in the long term, but can Coutinho play that role? Because he has played a lot of his career at Liverpool from the wide left, and that's not exactly what we need right now. We need somebody to come in and play as an interior in the three in midfield, and can he play that role? That is the 100 million question and the rest, because that's what we want to know. Will Coutinho be able to sort of fit in with our philosophy, with our style of play? Will he be able to play in that midfield position that Iniesta has played in throughout many, many years at Barca? Will he be able to do that? That really is the massive question. Once again, though, positive three would certainly be a very big highlight. He is currently on outstanding form. So far, this season has been one of his best seasons so far in a Liverpool shirt in both the league and also the Champions League, which is really worth noting. A big, obviously, tournament amongst the best teams. Coutinho this season has been in really electrifying form. 14 appearances in the Premier League so far, seven goals and seven assists. Like I said, he's capable both of scoring and creating goals, which is really important that you can do both. In the Champions League, five appearances so far, five goals and two assists. He's been a really big part of getting Liverpool to that knockout stage in the competition, and he's been performing really, really well, not only in terms of the stats, but also the way that he plays the game. He's certainly a very key player at Liverpool. He can accept that responsibility, and like I say, in terms of carrying the ball, moving with it, dribbling, he's a very good player, and I think would certainly suit our style of play. Negative four, though, would revolve around his potential injury problems. Now, I say potential because often Coutinho is branded as a maybe an injury-prone player, somebody who spends a lot of time on the sidelines with niggling injuries. Now, I'm just going to give you some stats from the past few seasons in terms of the games that he's missed with injury problems. Now, this season so far, including today's game, which he was left out against Burnley, which obviously wasn't necessarily an injury, but he has missed this game. So he's missed nine games altogether so far this season. Last season, he also missed nine games, 11 during the 2015-16 to season, but in the 2014-15 to season, only two games missed per injury. So he does miss quite a few games each season with injuries, but obviously at Barcelona, maybe he could be dealt with a bit more. Maybe we could afford to rotate him if we need to do that in years to come. Obviously, Liverpool right now are very, very dependent on Coutinho, like, for instance, we would be on the likes of Messi, Suarez, so maybe at Barca, Coutinho wouldn't play as many games all at one time, and maybe those injury problems would be eased just a little bit. That is certainly something to note, with obviously the amount of money that you're going to pay to get your hands on Coutinho. And positive number four, the fourth and final point of this video, would be about his consistency. Now, that's a really, really important point, because we're not just buying somebody here who simply had one good campaign, one electrifying season, and we're just suddenly buying him up for the sake of it. This is somebody who's been a consistent performer year in, year out. Let's say the past four seasons. The last four seasons, he's nearly hit a combined 20 goals and assists over the last four years. So he's been really, really consistent in a Liverpool shirt. Not only that as well, in Brazilian national team, he does very, very well. He suits their surroundings. He can thrive under the big pressure. And that's really important at a club like Barcelona. When you go in there, you've got to feel like you belong. You've got to feel the confidence to go and show what you can do. And I think Coutinho certainly wouldn't struggle at all with that. And also with Coutinho, we would possibly be getting a player who could give us something a little bit different in that midfield role. He is somebody, of course, if you would have watched him over the past few years, he does like to shoot from distance. and He does score a lot of long-range goals. Now, that is something at the club at the moment which we really do not have in abundance. We do not shoot from long range. We hardly ever take on shots from outside the box. And often when teams are parking the bus, when they're really deep in the pitch, when we're finding it difficult to break teams down, it could be very useful to have somebody like Coutinho who can take on shots from outside the box, who can maybe take on things that you wouldn't usually expect from Barcelona and give us a bit of a different outlook. So it's certainly something to bear in mind. I think there's both positives and negatives when you look at Coutinho. My own personal thoughts would be simply this. It's a very, very expensive fee. I think it's a lot of money and probably and definitely too much money to spend on Coutinho. The market right now is absolutely crazy. But the bottom line is, if you want the very best players, you often have to pay the very best money. And that's exactly what's going on here. What I would say, though, the biggest question for me isn't about the fee. It goes back to that positioning. Is Coutinho fully able to slot into our midfield? And is that where we're going to play him? Because we've signed Dembele, who can operate as a winger. Lionel Messi can go wide or go central. Suarez can go central. We're talking about Griezmann in the summer. We're not really looking for somebody right now who's going to come into our front three. We need somebody who's going to replace Iniesta in the long term. If Coutinho can come in, do that, show the quality that he has shown over the last few years, it'll be worth the investment. But he has to be ready to mould himself into that midfield position. That is the biggest thing for me. Can he do that? If he can, we can go ahead and sign him. I would be much 
much, much happier if it was 150 million. I think 180 million is absolute extortion from Liverpool, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Like I say, nothing at all is done yet. The rumours continue, the reports continue. He was in Liverpool squad to face Burnley today. Make of that what you will. We will have to see what happens in the coming days with regard to Felipe Coutinho. But as always, guys, please make sure you're leaving your thoughts down below on Coutinho. What are your positives? What are your negatives? Do you think the fee is worth it to bring somebody like this in or should we be pursuing other targets? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. I will see you very, very soon with more videos. But until then, as always, Vizca El Barça! Barça, Barça, Barça.